In this video, I'm going to find the inverse of a 3 by 3 matrix without using an online calculator or anything like that. And at the end of the example, I'm going to explain why the method works. So we're given this initial matrix. And now what we're going to do is we're going to separate it off and we're going to write the identity matrix right after it. And this works for any size matrix, 2 by 2, 4 by 4, so on and so forth but you have to match it with the proper identity matrix. So if you have a four by four matrix, you need a four by four identity matrix. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna reduce the matrix on the left using row operations into the identity matrix. So pretty much what we're doing is we're turning the matrix on the left into the identity matrix here. And we're gonna mimic the changes we make on the left onto the identity matrix on the right. So we can start by simplifying the first row. We can multiply it by one fourth. And then we can also multiply the second row by negative two and add it to the third row. And so what this is gonna look like is the first row becomes one, zero, one half. The second row stays the same. And then the third row, we add one times negative two is negative two plus two is zero. Four times negative two is negative eight plus three is negative five. Now onto the right side. So the first row we divide it by four. So it becomes one fourth, zero, zero. The second row does not change. And then the third row becomes zero. Then negative two times one is negative two plus zero is negative two and a one. Next, we're gonna simplify the third row and we're going to multiply it by one fifth, negative one fifth. I'm gonna write that down here. So the first two rows stay the same, but the third row becomes zero, zero, one. Now onto the right. Again, the first two stay the same, but the third row becomes zero two-fifths, negative one-fifth. Now we're gonna multiply the third row by negative one-half and add it to the first row. And then we're going to multiply the third row by negative four and add it to the second row. So now this matrix becomes one, zero, 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 one, zero, and zero, zero, one. So now the left side is the identity matrix, so we're done with that. But now we have to do the right side. And so we have one-fourth and then two-fifths times negative one-half, which is negative one-fifth and negative one-fifth times negative one-half, which is one-tenth. The second row becomes zero, then two-fifths times negative four, which is negative eight-fifths, plus one, which is five-fifths, so we have negative three-fifths. Negative one-fifth times negative four is four-fifths, and then the third row stays the same. So the matrix on the right side here is actually the inverse of the matrix here. So I'm going to quickly write that at the bottom. So why does this method work? And to understand it, we have to, we have to understand what an inverse is. And so if we have the matrix A, and we say that matrix A is invertible, that means there's some row operations that we can apply to A that will eventually get it into the identity matrix, which we denote as IN. And we said A is invertible, so there's row ops that lead it to the identity matrix. So then to find what the inverse of A is, so all we have to do is apply the row operations that took us from matrix A to the identity matrix onto the identity matrix again. So we apply row ops a second time to the identity matrix. And that's what it means for something to have an inverse. The row operations that we use to get matrix A to the identity matrix form the inverse matrix of A.